Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today I'm just going to sit down and repot a couple of plants because I have a couple of plants to repot. And it's also just kind of been a little while since I really sat down and filmed a video. I uh, haven't really done any of my informative content in a little while. I've been not really motivated if it hasn't been clear as day. But I'll be back. Plan of the week isn't done. I'm just taking a little break, and all my other videos are not done. I'm just just taking a little time to, you know, get a fresh start, let's say. So today I'm just going to sit down and repot these plants, as I said. Uh, I have a couple of really cool ones here that I've acquired over quarantine. I will sit down and do a collective quarantine plant haul. We won't call it that, we'll just call it our June or July plant haul whenever I post it. But um, it's going to include all the plants that I've acquired throughout all of my time at home. I'm just going back to work at Urban Jungle, so things are just starting to settle back to normal, but we're just yapping away, so let's go ahead and repot these plants. I have a bunch of plants right next to me, I don't know how well you can see them. And we're going to start off with this Philodendron brand T Anim, actually. I got this a couple of months ago, I think it was in one of my last plant hauls that I ended up doing. And uh, I have another one of these in my home that I've just let grow out and the leaves get a lot smaller and sometimes the vines don't even put off uh, any foliage at all. So I wanted to kind of prevent that with this one. And my friends at Ill Exotics, which is another plant store here in Philadelphia, were kind enough to send me some of their materials. So they sent me their aroid mix right here so it's their um, soil mixture that is uh, catered specifically towards aroids, philodendrons, epipernums, monsteras, raphidophoras and they um, th not necessarily specialize in aroids but they sell a lot of aroids and they have a lot of really cool ones in fact I would go as far to say that they probably have like the most interesting selection of aroids in Philadelphia as uh, in terms of like stores so if you are in the Philadelphia area and you are looking for rare aroids if you're into that I definitely recommend checking out Ill Exotics highly recommend them and they're also an LGBT run business which I really appreciate it's pride month it's June so of course I really want to go the extra mile and appreciate that I'm also clearly a gay man myself so I, you know have to appreciate that but this is also a, a moss pole that they have made as well they make these in-house and they do a really, really good job making these. They are filled with sphagnum moss and then they are wrapped with sheet moss, if I am not mistaken. I don't have the sheet of paper that they gave me when they sent it to me, but I'm pretty sure that's exactly what they do. And they wrap it up with, it looks like twine, um, like a uh, some kind of like hemp twine or something. I don't know. They'll tell you what it is, but they, they do a really good job is what I'm trying to say. So I'm really excited about this. So thank you so much, Franco and Chris from Ill Exotics for sending me this stuff. I'm super excited to try it out. And I have a bunch of pots as well. I'm thinking because this is, you know, has this stake, I probably want to go with my deepest pot that I have. So I think that this would actually look really nice with this in here. And this philodendron I think that's that's perfect so let's go ahead and plant that up first it's gonna start off by adding just a little bit of my aroid mix into this pot oh and this looks really good this is full of perlite and bark and charcoal it look it looks really excellent I think that um, this philodendron is gonna really like it in fact I wish I had even more of it so I could pot up some of my other aroids that I have with it because I think these would really appreciate it, but I'm gonna work with what I have. In fact, I could just go visit my friends at Ill Exotics and get some more of this aroid mix if need be. Alrighty, so I'm going to start off by taking my Philodendron Martianum out of the pot and kind of just like loosening it up a little bit, some of these roots, getting them off. I'm gonna just pour some of this soil that it had been living in into this pot as well, give it a little mix. And I'm just gonna imagine how I'm gonna want it. I think because this is just like a bamboo skewer, I think I'm gonna pot the whole plant in and then stick it in afterwards instead of like potting the whole thing around it. I think that'd be kind of like, you know, kind of hard to keep it up. So I think that's a really great thing about this moss pole. So let's go ahead and add some more aroid mix. Gosh, I can't see the camera monitor and I really hope you guys can see what I'm doing. There's even rice holes in this soil mixture too. So I know that that's really helpful in keeping your soil mix aerated. Let's loosen up some of these roots. They've got some really nice roots on this Philodendron Rantanum. I know we're pretty far away from the camera, but trust me on this one, guys. 
Now I'm gonna keep this a little lower inside the pot just because this is a four inch Philodendron Brantianum and this is a rather big pot and it's ceramic and not um, terracotta or porous. So I really just don't want to ever overwater this plant. So I'm probably gonna keep it about an inch below the lip of the pot. Alrighty, so we have our Philodendron Brantianum potted up in here and the way it was already like in my four inch pot was kind of like in a circle so I feel like they really did me a favor by leaving the space in the center for me to go ahead and stick this moss pole in. But let's just go ahead and appreciate how adorable this Philodendron Brantianum already looks in this pot. It's a match made in heaven. And I'm just gonna take my moss pole and just gingerly nestle it in there. Alrighty, perfect. And I'm just gonna tap in the soil around it just to keep it from moving. Alrighty. So my philodendron's already pretty young, so I don't know if I'm gonna necessarily need to stake it up at this point, but I have this Velcro tie right here, which is just fantastic. I get it on Amazon, it costs just a few dollars, and you just simply take an inch or two, probably more than that, if I'm using this moss pole. I'm usually working with like skewers and you just need a tiny bit, but I'll take a about six inches, I guess, in this case, and I will go ahead and just find a vine and take it and just wrap this around to keep it in place. And as these vines start to grow longer and get older, I can continuously wrap it with this Velcro tie. And I really love this stuff. This is so great. It's better than like the nursery tape, the like green stretchy tape that I use. I feel like that stuff's just like more annoying to work with. All this stuff just holds on to itself. You don't have to tie it. So I really like that. Not sponsored. Nothing in this video is sponsored. I mean, they did send me the moss pole and the, um, the soil, but they did not ask for a video. So just putting that out there. We're all done potting our Philodendron Brantianum and it looks so good. It looks kind of like really natural in this pot with this moss pole. So I'm really liking the way it looks. Of course, it's going to take a little bit of time to grow up this moss pole, but I'm really hoping that it will really like the east window that it's growing in and the foliage will get bigger and not smaller like my other Philodendron Brantianum. So let's wish this one the best. Judge it back here. Next, I think I'm going to repot... Let's do this Aglianema while we're doing aroids. Um, this is an Aglianema, they call this Tricolor Echo. I got this from Glass Houseworks. I did um, a video a couple of months ago that was like online plant shop with me and I put a bunch of plants in my cart and I did order some of them and they just recently came in. And I said I was gonna do an unboxing video, but it was, I, I didn't film it because it just wasn't that exciting to be honest. But um, there were a couple of plants in the box that definitely were exciting and this was one of them so this filled not filled under an aglianema tricolor echo don't really know much about it other than the fact that it just looks beautiful so i think i'm gonna put this in a darker pot one of the darker pots i think i'm gonna go for the the berg's pot with this one you guys know i'm a big fan of my berg's pot so i have one right here and i think that this would look i think this would look pretty good i'll probably do it um slightly upright because this plant's on a weird angle so i'll probably just tilt it a little bit but I think that's the right choice. We're not gonna second guess ourselves in this repotting video. We're just gonna go for it. We are gonna need my soil mixture because I'm out of my good soil mixture from my friends at Ill Exotics. Although I can, I can try. My soil mixture here is just some soil from a bag, all purpose mix, and a good heap of perlite because I never use soil mix right from the bag because it's just too heavy for our house plants. I never find that they do well. So I'm just gonna start by, as always, putting a little bit of soil in our pot. You guys know the drill at this point. I like to just like nestle my pot in whatever I'm potting it in and take out whatever I'm potting. Wow, this is not very rooted at all. Wow. It's that one little root, but what's to be done? Not really loving the way this looks because of the way the plant is under the soil. It's kind of awkward and I kind of have to have it on an angle. 
But you know what? I'm gonna be okay with it, and I'm just gonna check that off as character. So this plant just has some character, let's say that. So it, it does look really good in the pot. Not gonna, not gonna say anything about the small amount of roots, even though I kind of just said something. Let you guys think about that yourselves. But this plant looks great in here, it really does. It looks, it looks really good, so. Oh, I just hope it takes well, because now I'm worried that I just put this in way more soil than it wants to be in with that small amount of roots, but I think we'll know very quickly if this plant's not happy. We'll probably have two of these leaves turn yellow very quickly if it's not happy, and I can do something about that, maybe put it in water or something, but I don't know. I'm hoping that this does well. These Berg's pots, like, they are, like, magic. And once again, not sponsored in the slightest, but I, um, I adore these pots. They are a little bit more pricey, but they are totally worth it. Everything I pot in one just, like, loves life. So they are no joke. I'm a really, really big fan of these, so I will water this in as well as the Philodendron Brantianum when I'm done filming, but I'm just going to carry on. I have another Aglianema here. This, I, I don't know exactly what this is. This looks like Aglianema Maria, but the leaves are just a little bit bigger. Maybe it's just a little bit more mature. I actually found this on the ground at Urban Jungle, the plant store where I work at, and it was just like stomped into the ground. I guess someone like knocked into it or something, and then people were just trampling all over it, and I felt really bad for it. So I, I took it home with me, and I've just had it in this jar of water for a pretty long time. As you can see, it's got quite a good amount of roots now, and I don't want uh, it to have to live in water forever. If you keep your plants in water for too long, they don't acclimate to soil well, um, but these roots look really good, and like it's a really good time to get it into soil. So yeah, let's do that. Put this jar aside so I don't spill water on the floor, but I'm just wondering, what might be a good pot? I have this really nice, like, rustic terracotta pot right here. I'm a really big fan of these, and that would look really good. Once again, I'm just worried it's a little too big. Aglianemas, they don't, they're, people say they're easy plants, but I wouldn't call them easy plants. They seem to have a mind of their own, so I'm just a little nervous that this might be a little too much, but at the same time, these roots are pretty big, and if I put this in the bottom of the pot, the roots are, you know, going around the diameter of the pot. So maybe it's okay. Maybe I should add a little bit more perlite to my soil mixture. I think it's okay. I don't know, this would look really good. This would look really good, but then again, it's like a huge pot. And I don't wanna have to deal with that. I could do it. This is too small. <sighs> the dilemma of being an indoor gardener. This would look really cute. This would look really cute. <sighs> Found a winner. Okay, we're going with this. And I'm gonna put a little bit of soil down in the bottom once again, just because I don't want these water roots to just be sitting right at the bottom of the terracotta, just smushed against it underneath all that soil. So I'm gonna kind of hold it up. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. I can't see the monitor, but I'm just gonna try to hold it up like an inch above where my soil is already, and then just start to pour in my soil over top while I'm holding the plant in place, just so I can kind of get those roots to be a little bit more dispersed around the pot than just kind of like set in one place. Not that it really, matters but it's just me trying to do the best I can for my little plant here. He lives such a good life in water I would hate for him to move the soil and just die a, a quick death but my issue with ugly names is, is I, I bring them home and they tend to yellow a lot of their leaves pretty quickly and it's it's not great because they're not very fast growers so then they just don't look very great. It's like when you bring home a ficus and they lose their leaves. Fortunately, these seem to hang on pretty well. So for example, this one that I had brought home had probably like eight or nine leaves on it when I brought it home. And it was just, you know, a broken off stem that was trampled on. Um, and over a couple of months, some of those leaves yellowed and fell off pretty quickly. Uh, but it's been, I would say like two months now where we've held on to its growth and now we have a new leaf coming in if it hasn't even put off a new leaf which i think it has so i feel like it's stable but once again i am moving it out of that water into um soil and I, i'm just worried this is just a little too heavy this pot while it's like terracotta i don't think this is really a, a like as porous this is 
a cash pow or a planter that doesn't have a hole in the bottom that I actually drilled a hole into the bottom of to make it more airy, uh, airy but um, airy, make it drain. That's the word I'm looking for. And I've had decent luck planting in these. So I'm gonna be fine. I'm just, I don't wanna kill my plants, guys. I think we all feel that way. Oh, okay, so this is a really cool one that I have next. This is a Schifflera Actinophila Dazzle, is what they call it. So Schifflera Actinophila is um, the largely Schifflera. Of course, this is small because it's a cutting. I can see exactly where they cut it and where um, the new leaves are growing off, which is why they're so teeny tiny and it looks almost exactly like a Schifflera arboricola. But I'm very hopeful that within a year or two, this plant will be a very nice specimen because I really fell in love with this when I saw this at a botanical garden and it was like a towering tree. So I'm hoping that I can do something for this plant to make it happy. Um, the first step would be planting it in the appropriate pot, which is going to be probably the most questionable part of this whole process. I have terracotta. I feel like that might be the best bet to start it out in, just like a four inch terracotta pot coming from this two and a half inch um, nursery planter. And I have to say, after that aglianema, I also got this one from Glass Houseworks. I'm not necessarily expecting the largest amount of roots on this plant. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and plant in this little terracotta pot. It's already got some age to it, so it's kind of nice, but. <clears throat> I really want to plant something in this, but I don't think I have anything today that I can plant in there. Schiffleras are really easy plants to grow, so I'm a really big fan of them. I think they're a little, um, you know, kind of, some people find them a little bit boring, but I don't know. I think, I think they're cool. That's really all I have to say about them. I'm uh, not the biggest, you know, most amount of roots on this plant, but this soil and I guess root ball is kind of holding together, so... Um, yeah, <laughs> nestle it in, you can spank your pots or you can just, when I'm dealing with smaller pots, I usually just take my thumbs and just go around the perimeter and make sure that it is, um, well packed enough, not like, you know, like deathly packed that it's just going to suffocate the plant, but I just don't want the plant to just get knocked over once I water it. Usually that's what happens. Um, put soil in the pot, we water it and then the soil just, just sinks and then you need to add more soil. So just to avoid that, I like to really pack it in. Like I said, not too tight, but enough. And this looks great. Can't go wrong with a plain terracotta pot. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, but plenty of worse things out there. That, that's a fact. Okay, let's just move on down the line. I have this Ripsalis Paradoxa. This is from my friends at the Potted Elephant. I filmed an unboxing from them a couple weeks ago. I think I actually just posted it, so, you know, it took a little while, but, um, yeah, really cool plant. I love this Ripsalis Paradoxa. It's so big, and it's got the red edges. They grow them in their greenhouse, and they love life in their greenhouse, so, um, we're gonna do this plant a really good favor and give it a nice pot. I think that this one right here would look really nice, and I'll kind of do it on an angle, so it's, like, kind of spilling out of the circular pot, right? Can we all be in agreement that this is the right choice? Don't even have to pick another one? Okay, cool, awesome. Okay, let's go ahead. Um, I probably could use a, a little bit more of a cactus mixture for this plant, but I find Ripsalis to be really, really easygoing plants in terms of the soil. I tend to just use a well-draining mixture, like I have my um, go-to mixture right here, which is just some soil and perlite, as I mentioned earlier. Um, could I add some bark because they're epiphytic? Yes. Or could I do like a more sandy mixture? I'm sure they would appreciate it, although they're not really growing in sandy mixtures in their natural habitat. But we're just going to use the mixture I have because that's what I use on all my other Ripsalis and they don't seem to complain about it. Ooh, they use a really good amount of perlite here. I'm, I'm impressed. Just gonna set this guy in. I'm really not even going to do much to these roots because Ripsalis have very lacy roots to begin with, so I don't really even need to bother breaking it up. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more soil in, raise up this plant a little bit more. All right. This is such a beautiful Ripsalis. I've only really gotten into jungle cacti over probably like the last like a year and a half, I would say. 
So not that long. Still have plenty of other plants I need to get into. I'm still um, pretty late on the begonia bus, but I'm getting there. Slowly but surely. Don't ask me for begonia tips though, because I literally know nothing. This is <laughs> so adorable. I could make it go upright if I wanted to. Like, I could, but I think, I think I just want it to be like downward. I'll judge it a little bit upwards, just so it's like, whew, instead of, whew, but eventually it's gonna be like, whew. anyway, if you guys need the onomatopoeias. Cute, like super cute. Can't ask for anything better. Okay, and I have one more plant I'm gonna repot today. This is also from the potted elephant. This is a pilea. They call this pilea leprechaun, and it's so adorable. And I need to get it out of this tiny little pot because it keeps drying out on me. So I'm gonna move it into this cute terracotta pot. And I did also drill a hole in the bottom of this one because it did not have a hole in the bottom. But it's gonna. This one's gonna take like five seconds to pot up. Just gonna fill up a little soil, like always. A little bit more. And these things, these pileas are like known for growing like weeds um, in a greenhouse space. But they also perform really well in a terrarium. Of course, I'm not doing that right now, but um, I'm gonna put it in my bedroom right underneath the grow light and hope for the best. I think it's adorable in here. Of course, I have to do my little Spanx. But, oh, isn't that just so adorable? I feel like it doesn't look like a houseplant, and that's what I love about it. It's like, oh, it's totally what I'm into. Like, get out of the way, variegated monstera. I want my my plants that look like a weed. That's like, oh, yes. Okay, all right, so that is it. I have repotted everything, um, sorry. This is probably like the most boring video I've ever done, but yeah, I'm just, I need to get the gears turn in and freshen it up a little bit. So I'll be back. Don't worry. Just don't really have anything stewing in my brain right now. Um, but I will probably come at you guys soon with a plant haul. Like I said, showing you guys all of the plants that I have acquired over the last couple of months. There's some cool ones. Um, yeah, so I will see you then. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.